let's work through a selection sort process and do some analysis. Let's use the same values that we used in the card animation series and see how this works out. Remember the idea is to find the best value for a position. So we think it's the 5 for this very first position, but we go looking and see that the 3 is better, 7 is not better, 1 is even better, 2 is not, 4 is not. So we end up swapping the final best position with the first one. So that's going to be a 1, 3, 7, 5, 2, and 4. And that would be the end of the first pass. Now, what we do is count the number of steps, and we're going to count the comparisons. And there were five comparisons, because we compared with the 3, 7, 1, 2, and 4. There were three times where we decided this was the best value, so we count each one of those steps, that's three. And then it took us three steps to do the final swap in a three-step swap. So the total cost of this pass was 11 steps. Now we do the next pass where we're trying to find the best value for this 3, which we think is a 3 at first. The 7 is not better, 5 is not better, 2 is better, 4 is not better. So we end up swapping the 2 and the 3. So we end up with 1, 2, 7, 5, 3, and 4. And that's the end of that pass. And we look at the counts for this one, and we had four comparisons. We had two assignment statements in determining the best value, and then the three-step swap at the end for a total of nine steps. Trying to find the best value for this position, we say seven, I think, is the best one. But we see that five is better, and then three is better. So we swap those two, three, five, seven, and four, and the one and the two just drop down. That's the end of that pass. And the counts for this one are three comparisons, three assignment statements for the best value, three steps for the swap, for a total of nine steps. Finding the best value for this one, we think the five is best, seven is not, four is even better. So we swap those two. So that's four, seven, and five. And again, one, two, and three are already in sorted order. So the counts for this one is two comparisons, two assignment statements for the best value, and three steps for the swap for a total of seven. In the final one, we're looking for the best value for this position, which we think is the seven, but see that the five is better. So we end up swapping those. And so that's five, seven, one, two, three, and four. And we are finally finished with the process. And the count for this one was one comparison, two assignment statements for the best value, three steps for the swap for a total of six. Now if we add all these up, we have 11 and nine, that's 20, and nine, that's 29, plus seven is 36, plus six is 42. So the total number of steps is 42. Now let's do some analysis. In the big O table that we talked about before, for an n value of six, you recall that it took us 36 steps to do an n squared process. And this is the closest value to this example. Now, what we just did here is an average case. And the number of steps it took us was 42. In the chart, it is closest to the 36 value. And so we consider this having a running time of O of n squared. If we looked at the best case of this scenario, where the elements would be already be in order, the number of steps it would take would be 35, which is still close to 36, and it would still be considered a running time of O of n squared. The worst case would be when the elements are in reverse order. The number of steps there would be 52, because you're reassigning the best value every single time you compare. But that's still a running time of O of n squared. So the conclusion for the selection sort is that it's a very stable, but very slow process and will always have a running time of O of n squared. Now it's time to take a look at the pseudocode for the selection sort. Essentially, it uses a nested loop process, a loop within a loop, to select the best value for the position. And here is that code. Before we get into the code, here is the three-step swap process that brings in a list and then two positions and exchanges those two values. A temporary variable gets the value at one of the positions, that position gets the value at the other position, and then the other position gets the value of the temp. 
effectively swapping the two positions. That is called right here in the pseudocode process. Now let's look at the king loop, which starts at zero and goes all the way to the second to the last position in the list, one step at a time. This is the jack saying, King, I think you've got the best element so far at the very beginning of the process. This is the queen standing next to the king saying, I'm going to go looking through the rest of the list to find something better. So if the queen finds an element that's better than what the jack is pointing to, the jack gets that position. There's the end of the queen loop. We swap the king and the best position, sending it down to here and swapping those two. And then that's the end of the king loop. So take some time to carefully study this code so that you totally understand what's going on with the selection sort.